I'm with Nick Stanzik, and we're fishing for swordfish during the day off Isla Morada in the Florida Keys. Basically two hours in fighting fish, big swordfish. We had started the day off, George had fought two fish, two and a half hours combined. Unfortunately, we had no fish to show for it. You were pretty exhausted, pretty depressed, and I'm thinking this whole TV shoot is slipping away. How many opportunities are you gonna get with big fish? Nick said, let's go back to the numbers again. But sure enough, we kept at it, and we sent down that fresh bait, and again, within a few minutes, we were hooked up. In less than a minute this time, that bait no sooner hit the bottom, and I took the cranks, tap, 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 bends over, on again. You can hear me, that going to come up out here, he's angled way up. Wind on's right here. Sure enough, I'm on to another big fish. This thing, we had the wind on actually on the reel at a few points throughout that fight. And like nothing, the fish would run it back off and, and take 100 yards of line off. It was a two and a half hour fight up and down. These fish are, they're unlike any other animal out there. They're mean, they fight like a cross between a tuna and a big marlin, except a swordfish would pull a big marlin backwards. This one tough fish. Big. Yeah, big mean one, that's for sure. Hopefully we got dinner on the boat because it's gonna be a, a sunset ride home, maybe dark. That's fine, plenty of potato chips. <laughs> now we're past the two hour mark. I had a fight with the first fish for an hour, went back on the numbers, hook up with a second fish that we lost for an hour. I'm on this one now for two hours. That's four hours basically of almost back to back fighting time. How do you think I was feeling? See him? I know we had the fish about 50 feet away and we were getting ready to take him. I could tell he was tiring out and then... The unthinkable happened. George fell in. And I was just in the blink of an eye, it was one second. Next thing I know, I get pulled overboard. And I looked over and George was in the water. I don't know whether it was the weight from the camera boat that had caught the side of my boat and I wasn't prepared for it. I got a slight bump, I lost footage, I slid, I'm overboard. I'm in the water, hooked up to a big swordfish. This is how I'm gonna die. Then I realize it's a bad way to die and there's no way in the world this is gonna happen to me. <coughs> Let me hang on to you, buddy. Hang on, I almost got it. In my mind, I've always gone through the procedures. If you get pulled over, whether you're a stand-up tackle or you're in a chair, I backed off on the drag, the fish is going, I relieved the pressure. I'm on the side of the boat now, Nick Stanzik has got to be freaking out. The weight of the outfit now had me sinking down to near my chin. Hang on, I almost got it. I grabbed George and luckily the cameraman jumped off the other boat and swam over and gave us a hand and help me, help me get him out. I'll go under the cliffs. Next thing, I hear a splash. Here comes Kevin Tierney, longtime friend and show producer over there and he's trying to go ahead and get that rod turned around to unclip me and get me out of that. He finally got the clips undone. He passed the rod back up to Nick. So far, I'm out of it. I swim to the back of the Mako and trying to get up into the transom area to get back in the boat. My fighting belt wedges. I think Kevin or somebody had either moved or unstrapped my belt to where I could get in that transom area. Was it graceful? No. Was I in there? Yes. Was I glad I was in there? Hell yes. <laughs> and within a couple of minutes later, George is back in the harness and... I'm fighting the fish after being pulled overboard. And I have to say this. Keep winding on, George. Because I was 100% guilty in that I didn't put the restraints on the reel that would go to the boat and also to the back side of the harness that would clip onto the boat in case something exactly like that happened where Nick or whoever's on board could grab the outfit and pull you back into the boat. In addition, this is why you should always have some kind of cutting instrument secured to the fighting harness that if you go overboard, you could also just cut the line. It was just stupidity on my part because honestly, I always thought because of my experience out here doing this, that accidents always happen to the other person. And today, I was the other person. 
When did you get an inch? Get an inch. I guess within eight or ten minutes, we sank the gaffs into the fish and struggled to pull a 256 pounder over the side of the boat. Keep pulling on him. No, keep pulling on him. When Nick stuck the fish and said he had him, the relief that had gone through my body, I can't explain it. Finally, we have ourselves a swordfish. It had been one incredible, action-packed, fatigued day. We got him, you guys. It was a hell of a fight. Beautiful, huh? Over 200 pounds, really fat. Some of them just have soul and a spirit. You got to break it. Where are we at? Two hours and 30 minutes on him. Wow. Yeah, he's a good one. He's well over two, really fat. The only problem, when we tried to lift the fish over the gunnel, I was shot. George was exhausted. I can't blame him, but uh, I didn't have quite the strength myself to pull him over the side, so. I tried to help Nick the best I could get this fish up there, but I had nothing there for him. After trying a few times, we decided to pull him through the door. And then somehow, with Nick and me, for what I was worth, pulling on this fish, got this swordfish in the cockpit of the Mark VI. Nice job, George. We have to run through the darkness to get back to Bud Mary's. We had a long run ahead of us. Turned all the lights on the boat, took that drive in, relaxed, recharged my batteries. It was almost like a surreal feeling to me when we backed into Bud Mary's. In the darkness, Nick and I grabbed this swordfish. People were snapping pictures. And you catch a 200 plus pound broadbell, that's what I consider big down here. Fish weighed in at 256. One heck of a swordfish. And that's gonna be a night that I'll remember for a long, long, long time. Bring that fish, put it on the scales, and um, it was just an incredible way to cap a rather bizarre day. Yeah.